This is the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. Hello and welcome back to the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. I'm your host, meteorologist Brad Miller, and I would like to thank you for joining us from our podcast headquarters located right here in Hackettstown, New Jersey. And joining me once again, of course, is my co-host, meteorologist Mike Mahalik. And uh, Mike, good to have you here for another round in the Weather Lounge, a very special and informative (laughs) episode of our podcast this week. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. I mean, we have uh, you know, our very own Frank Lombardo. Yes, a very special guest here. Yeah, the uh, the founder, the president of Weatherworks. He's had a passion for weather for 50 years. Um, now, let's not age him already. Well, Mike. I mean, I'm not trying to, but... Uh, <laughs> but well, you uh, find out my age later on, but go ahead. Don't worry, I'll hear about it later. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's a certified consulting meteorologist. He's done numerous cases as a forensic meteorologist, actually, Brad. And I don't know if many people know what a forensic meteorologist is, but um, you know, basically, we recreate the weather uh, for cases involving uh, maybe slip and fall accidents or something of that nature. But he's uh, also testified in court many times as a weather expert. So. Our All the different products that we produce here at Weatherworks as well. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a pretty fun uh, podcast, Brad. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of stories here that Frank has about uh, building the company up um, from, yeah. I was going to say, this is our first guest here at the Weather Lounge. And, and we have to have, of course, we have to have the owner or CEO. Well, yeah, I mean, if we didn't bring him, <laughs> if we didn't bring him in right. first, he'd probably, you know, be calling me on the phone or something. Yeah, it wouldn't be, be good. Hey. <laughs> what about me, guys? But yeah, the uh, the one and only Frank Lombardo, for sure. Yeah, so we will have the our president, Frank Lombardo, here at Weatherworks on right after the break. Have you ever wanted to know exactly how much snow or ice fell in your backyard? Or how much snow you just plowed from that two-acre parking lot? How about getting documentation that explains why you applied several applications of salt to a busy apartment complex? When it comes to snow and ice verification, it can be a headache trying to find accurate totals for the busy winter season. Certified snowfall totals from Weatherworks provides a stress-free way to get reliable information for the exact location you need. It's your complete winter weather verification platform. For more information or to try a demo, visit CertifiedSnowfallTotals.com or call us at 908-850-8600. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a very special edition of the Weather Lounge. We have our first live guest on the Weather Lounge, our own president and CEO of Weatherworks, uh, Frank Lombardo. And uh, Mike, I'll tell you, I've been waiting for this episode for a long time. So without further ado. Yeah, let's bring him on. Frank, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, (laughs) it's exciting to be here, I have to say. And so honored. Brad, that I'm your first <laughs> guest. It didn't take any twisting of any arms, but um, it, it's nice to be here. It really is. M- Mike and I, uh, we debated about uh, who was going to be our first guest, and the, the first uh, name out of our mouths was Frank Lombardo. No. Of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have to. Um, no, I mean, like, uh, yeah, we have to bring Frank on talking about uh, how we uh, built up this business. And Frank, you know, I, I know you've been in weather for a long time. I mean, I'm just wondering what started your passion in weather? Like, what was that one thing that you can remember that said, I'm going to be a meteorologist one day? You know, you know, it's, it's interesting you ask that question because that's a question that we ask when we interview candidates. And mm-hmm. it's a question that I'm always fascinated about. And, and I love hearing their stories because we all do have stories. Uh, uh, meteorologists, it's a passion. It really is a love. Um, and it's, it, you know, I never thought of the passion as a profession. Mm-hmm. Passion came first, profession followed. Sure. Profession was probably the accident. Passion <laughs> just came naturally. Um, but um, it, it it was just so long ago. It was always in me uh, as a kid. Uh, my mom, um, b- born in the U.S., but immigrated to Italy in the 1920s. Okay. All right. So 
most of our friends thought that she was an Italian immigrant, but she was a U.S. citizen. But she was born about three miles away from where that famous groundhog comes up in Punxsutawney. Wow. Really? I didn't know that. So I think it's in my blood. <laughs> All right? I give her the credit. And she also, when I was a kid, like four or five years old, she would tell me these weather stories all the time. Uh, and she'd have this folklore, weather folklore. Um, oh, if it snows on the um, first day, if it rains on the first day of June, it's going to snow in January. Right. And, and I would follow that as a seven, eight, nine-year-old. And I, I think the first really event that occurred that really like, uh, I really love this. <laughs> Now, forget yeah, sure. the girls. Well, I was only <laughs> 10 years old, but um, Hurricane Donna, 1960. Um, again, I'm dating myself. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my first grade class, uh, and I have two older siblings in the class. And that's when the National Weather Service would issue a warning but schools wouldn't close until the event actually was occurring. <laughs> that's how much we trusted the weather service. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's, oh, the, it's the middle of the storm. The rain's coming horizontal. Uh, I am like just so excited that uh, school lets out and we're in tandem walking home. My oldest sister, second oldest brother, and then me third in a row. And this tree falls right behind us. Really? Tree falls right behind us on our way home. And um, they run and forget about me. <laughs> I stop and look at the tree. Of course. And I go, holy. I, didn't, I couldn't say that word. Did you bring yeah, this is a PG podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. I brought my cell phone, yes. <laughs> I wish I had. And this tree falls. So they get home. My mom's going, hey, where's Frankie? Uh, and uh, I come like five minutes later, all excited, could not sleep that night. Wow. Uh, trees falling, wind howling. And that really, that's my earliest memorable, you know, uh, event. So six years old, 1960, um, wow. September, first grade, and just loving it. But it just got worse and worse after that. <laughs> <laughs> so could we count this as your memorable storm? Or uh, was there a quote, life-changing storm after this, or? I don't know, the tree almost fell on him, well, Brad. I mean, that's... Too. <laughs> I, it altered, yeah, he may not even have been here if he was five seconds you later. You know, I think, I think that, was, that was the trigger that right. really created um, the passion mm -hmm. that I have. Uh, memorable storms, life-changing storms. Um, I think um, uh, probably the life-changing storm for me, because it was crucial for for this particular business was the blizzard of 96. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I had been working as a um, uh, work from home mom, dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> mom? Um, <laughs> Mr. Mom, that was a good movie. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you get to meet all the moms. Oh, no, um, that's fine. And, you know, I, 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 I can't let this episode go by without saying I could not have done it without my wife working full time. Right. you know, medical benefits, et cetera. Sure. Uh, and me working from home, taking care of the kids. Um, and in 1996, that blizzard that lasted like two and a half days yeah. um, almost ended my career. I mean, it was just wow. 24 hours nonstop for two and a half days. Um, <laughs> now see me on the other side of things, that was like my most memorable type storm. And I loved every second of it because I wasn't exactly. <laughs> in your position. If you're in Franklin. But now, now, this, now you already had WeatherWorks though for about ten, 10 years. years at this yeah. point, right? ten years working from my home, uh, no employees, uh, worked by myself. Always was content with that. Um, and this is at your house in is, your own little office. This is at my this. house, uh, um, a fully equipped office. I mean, I'm talking like 300 baud. Okay. Does anybody remember what that is? No, I don't know okay. what baud okay. means. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking download speeds where I, my heart rate was faster than the data coming in. Okay. Because <laughs> I was so uh, anticipating it. And you but, had the dot matrix printers probably. Dot matrix with every printer. run of exactly. every model coming out. Every line you'd yep. see coming out. Uh, it, so um, I'm patiently waiting for data. And uh, my wife, overly concerned with me, sending me 
sending food down to my office wow. um, and the kids bringing down stew. Uh, but I swear to God, I got my first gray hair then. In the 96 I mean, storm. I, yeah, 96 storm, just that, that spring I turned, started turning gray. And, but it also prompted me to hire someone. And that was, the, um, that was a big key for me because immediately I realized uh, treat your employees good, hire good people, and you get more than what you put out. Sure. And, and, and I was rewarded by that first employee, who's still here, by the way. <laughs> and uh, let me guess. Uh, that the, uh, yeah. And, I, and, and uh, I'm sure a lot of folks that are uh, with WeatherWorks, sure. uh, they no, know Tom, the name. Tommy Else. Tommy, Tommy Else, yeah. Tommy Else. He was, um, you know, dedicated, first employee, and um, again, still here. Uh, and um, I was determined to hire. I hired him um, two months after the storm, still in college intern for me and then the following um winter started full time was there ever a time in those first 10 years where you almost got to that point where i i gotta have someone else help me here i, I can't um, do this all by myself yeah and i had some part-time help i mean some of you uh may have uh, talked to john leo mm -hmm. or tony salimo and they yeah. were helping me part-time but not full-time they were assisting during the overnight hours etc but um uh, uh, tommy was our our first full-time employee right. And I guess the business really from that point on, because of not only Tommy joining you, I mean, you could probably do a lot more then from that point and it just branched out, I would imagine, from there. Exactly. And, and, and that's what I realized. And, and I think a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or um, individuals that start businesses, um, uh, they, they're content they, they, or they're, it's difficult to give up some of that responsibility. And what I realized is that as long as the person you're giving up, giving it up to, uh, has some skill set and is responsible, it actually it helps you duplicate the process. And 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 that became my objective. Um, you know, hiring Tommy made us do more than twice the work. We did two and a half times the work. So we hired Kevin Hoppler, who most of you know. Um, and he's uh, our director of sales right now in marketing. Um, and, and, and every time you hire someone, it does, uh, uh, it does help build the business. Hmm. Wow. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about when you first started, I wanted to bring it back a little bit. Um, what made you even start the company in the first place rather than just you know, uh, working at the National Weather Service or a news station or whatever it may be. What made you, what gave you that incentive? Well, uh, what preceded WeatherWorks was um, about 10 years of um, uh, my career with another private company. So I, I, I learned what worked. I was a minority uh, um I had a minority interest in the company uh, as a partner. Um, um, I learned what worked. And I also saw what I disliked. Um, the business that we were in was, were pri was primarily aviation weather. Okay. Um, and I, I, I did it well. I, I liked our clients, um, uh, liked briefing them, but didn't enjoy it as much as providing information to highway departments or snowplowing contractors. It was that one-in-one -on -one conversation that I would have with contractors um, that really sparked my interest to, to start focusing um, in that area. And I grew up in New Jersey. I was passionate for snowstorms. Um, snow and ice became my passion. Um, uh, even though I ended up going to graduate school at Texas Tech and studied severe weather, the irony of that was that I get there in August, October, they see their earliest, heaviest winter snowfall Jeez. ever. And I'm going, wait a second, I'm supposed to be studying severe weather. November, that same year, they get another snowstorm. Wow. And um, it, was, it was wild because I'm watching these snowstorms come down with blue northers, which I had no idea what they were. 
Um, <laughs> and Texas uh, Tech is located in the panhandle of Texas, right? Right. There. Love it's it. Located correct. south of Amarillo there, yeah, in, in, the, in the panhandle. So um, not prone to a lot of snow, but that particular year that I was there, they had like 20 inches of snow. It was like their snowiest winter ever. I says, I, I guess I got to get into this snow business. So, <laughs> um, so I left uh, the private company that I was working for um, and really began focusing on um, h- how to provide um, uh, better decision support for um, uh, individuals. Snowplowing contractors, um, and that's that evolved to um, highway departments. Um, I've always been, and not I mean, not to pat myself on the back, but I've, I've been a good person-to-person individual. I like talking to people. I like going to see people uh, in person. Um, the challenge now is uh, I need to pick up the phone and talk to the person. The technology. <laughs> I'm okay at, but um, um, some of some of our employees would rather email and text, and I still would rather pick up the phone and talk to the individual. Mm-hmm. And that's very important, that one-on-one conversation like you're talking about. I mean, that's something that a lot of your employees, I mean, even when I was hired, they instilled in me. I mean, you right. did, uh, you know, Sean and Kevin and Tommy, you know, and, and Ken, they all sure. would... And still, you need to make that connection with the people that you're talking and, and forecasting for. Because once they get to know you, I feel like they, then they build a level of trust. Absolutely. You have to develop that relationship. And that was something I always strived for. Um, uh, my wife would say, why are you driving 200 miles to see this individual mm-hmm. and do a workshop uh, in, their, in their garage? I says, uh, because I'm building a relationship with this individual. And, and some of those individuals today spend tens of thousands of dollars with us or more. Um, some of them have become national companies um, uh, that, 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 that be, have become our biggest clients. Um, so I've always, I, I, I never second guess those opinions or, or those decisions, I should say. I just got on the car and went. I guess you do. You can. Well, I mean, when you're trying to build a business from the ground up, I mean, I'm sure, you know, I think maybe a lot of entrepreneurs these days, they, they just think they're going to start a business and boom, they're going to have millions of dollars. Well, it's not like that, right, Frank? I mean, you have to put a lot of work into it, building it. It does take effort. It does take effort. Um, uh, and, and you have to really be passionate. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the passion that I had was much more, um, much more of the incentive than the plan because initially the plan was just get clients. But it's the passion that drove me to create a plan. If I, if I wasn't passionate about weather, this wouldn't have happened. I might have that weather service job um, that you asked me about. I, I think one of the greatest selling points of being a WeatherWorks client is that uh, you know, that, that chance to call at 2 a.m. and not get a recording or not get, hey, here's your forecast. You get an actual meteorologist, someone that can talk to you and let you know what's going on with the weather or if there's some changes coming up. Hey, it's just changed over to snow here or I've just changed over to rain. You know, that's the beauty, I think, of, of anyone that's a WeatherWorks client that they, they will get a live meteorologist. Uh, whether it's again 2 a.m., 2 p.m., you know, six in the evening, to talk about your specific area and what's going on, and I think I would love to, you know, be able to do that if I was, you know, a, a, a Department of Public Works or, or, or like a, a school district. You know, they have to make their decisions early. They want to talk to somebody and, and guide them. You know, what's going to happen with this upcoming forecast. I mean, like I think I said it in a previous podcast, uh, you know, I used to work for a landscaping company and plowed snow and how many times I'd be sitting in a parking lot and it's still snowing and it should have ended. And I'm trying to figure out on my phone, which wasn't as high tech as the the iPhones and things like today, you know, when it's going to stop snowing, I'm getting this radio forecast. It's not right. I mean, if I could have called somebody, it would have made a situation if they... If somebody would have told me it would have been over in uh, an hour, right? 
And, and this is what easily Frank game plan. This is again when when I started here too. You know, it's it's the people that call in that the trust that they've already gained over the years of a certain area that you're forecasting for, and and they you know they again expect you to have a great forecast for them, but at the same time you know they 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 want that human talk back and forth. You know, um, so I, I you know that's I think that's just one of the best things for a client to have with WeatherWorks. I just love that I part. Agree. And I agree, and and that, that, that clearly has been part of um, our WeatherWorks mission since 1986. So it's, it's really, it's delivering that message, being the best at delivering that message, our, our, our cert, and the message isn't always what the client wants to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right? It's weather, I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. And, and I'll tell you, that's one of the first things I've ever learned here. And, and if, thanks to Tommy, you know, he was one of the first ones that told me here, look, if the forecast isn't working out, tell them the forecast isn't working out. Right. Let's, let's work on that part because weather is weather. It's going to change. You're going to have forecast changes, but don't try to tell the person, oh, yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then it doesn't show up, the snow or the change over time. Tell the, tell the, the person that's calling you, look, we've got some changes to talk about and, and just work with it from that point on. And that's, I think, another great part of, you know, being able to contact the person and tell them about the changes in a forecast. Agreed, agreed. Um, so Frank, um, talking about in, in the early stages of the business, it seemed like, was it mostly radio related first and then moving to different clientele or did it start a different way? I mean, I'm just well, looking. Well, um, it, you know, I, I talk about passion. But I, I definitely needed income. <laughs> all well, right. I mean, we all need uh, income. <laughs> I loved uh, I, I loved the snow and ice um, industry, um, uh, but when I left um, my former my um, um, earlier uh, uh, business uh, partnership, um, I, what came to me was radio. Um, a few snow and ice clients, but mostly radio. Mm -hmm. So the business actually started off with mostly media clients. Um, and um, <laughs> there's probably some people around that still remember me. Oh, uh, my. Okay. No, Frank's going to date me now a little bit. There's um, some people around that can, can remember my voice on the air yeah. in, in New Jersey. The, the weirdest thing is my, I, I grew up in New Jersey, and I lived there until the late 80s. And this, of course, before cell phones and before school closings were on television, they would always be broadcast over the radio. And the station for Central Jersey was always WCTC out of New Brunswick. Not only would they give you the forecast, they would give you the school closings. And for some reason, when I was hired at Weatherworks and I was actually, you know, talking to, you know, the possibility of being hired, the name Frank Lombardo, CEO, just popped in my head. And I was like... That name sounds so familiar. I know I, I know I've heard. So I, I googled it. I looked it up, and sure enough, I asked my mom about it because she always listened to WCTC, and she's like, "Yes, Frank Lombardo. He was always the weatherman." On w and of course, we know it's a meteorologist now, but she said the weatherman, and so sure enough, the forecast would come on from meteorologist Frank Lombardo, and then the school closings would come up, and I just remembered it. So I knew Frank as right. the guy on radio before I actually. New Frank. You were probably person. you were probably <laughs> hanging on every word that Frank had to say. Uh, I'm sure that th there were times where Brad didn't <laughs> like Frank. Uh, the snowstorm is taking a turn yes. to the east and is going to miss the area. I'll tell you that was one of the greatest things about being a kid, though. Back before, how forecasts can change so quickly now, and we're, we're up to date basically when things change within an hour. I'm not going to lie. There were surprise snowstorms and there were surprise misses back in the 70s, 80s, and probably even to the early 90s before the communication got so much better. And it would be so bad as a kid in their teens expecting to have a day off from school on Monday. Oh, yeah, the forecast, 6 to 12 inches. Oh, we're not getting snow. We're not having school tomorrow. No way. You wake up and there's nothing on the ground. Nothing. It's raining. And then the opposite, of course, is great when you think, oh, you know, it's supposed to rain all day, and you wake up and there's a half a foot of snow on the ground. You're like, wow, yeah, no school. Yeah, yeah. And, and you don't have that anymore. No, you, I mean, you every so often. Yeah, um, you do. We get a little. We surprise. get a little surprise. No, but, no, no. But no. Um, you know, the, back then, twelve-hour intervals between you know sounding mm -hmm. updates uh, and model updates. Um, um, 
Uh, so much more challenging, much more hands-on, uh, obviously not the uh, technology that we have today. So monitoring things hour by hour and looking at things uh, 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 on a hand-drawn weather map mm -hmm. um, uh, was much, much more challenging. But it was still fun. It was still fun. And uh, yeah, I remember, I remember giving you those forecasts. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just remember uh, I, was, uh, I grew up in Edison. So Edison always came after Dinellon. So <laughs> if they skipped over from Dinellon to like Franklin, then I knew Edison oh, didn't done. have any yeah. kind of delay done. or, or closing. Yeah. Wait for the next list. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the next round. Yeah, they used to always say that. Hey, we got an updated list here. And yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's I just brought that up about hanging on every word because that's how I used to be yeah. with a local guy uh, in the Lehigh Valley. And uh, I used to just like, is he mentioning snow at all? I just need that snow. I, I And, you know, I was a weather nut um, just like everybody else and, you know, out there watching for the first snowflake to fall. Um, but, uh, you know, so, Frank, you started mostly in radio with the company and had some snow and ice clients. You then hired Tommy, and then you hired Kevin um, to help you with the business. At what point did you get to where I'm running out of space here in uh, my uh, home office? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it? Not, was there something uh, that triggered that I to go kept to digging and then creating more <laughs> space? But my, uh, really, you know, again, my wife was extremely supportive, but at at the fourth. At the fourth hire, she said to me, okay, you have an ultimatum. <laughs> Either find a space or move. <clears throat> so um, uh, we had just hired uh, Sean Rowland, who was our um, fourth employee. And at that point, um, we decided to look for um, some office space and, hire, and bought our, um, uh, our first uh, office space, um, 103 Mountain Court. Uh, which we still utilize and is really our uh, storm center, basically. Um, and, um, uh, and that just expanded to additional space and additional space. And, um, and now everyone's working from home. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, during the uh, times of the uh, pandemic, yeah, sure. A lot of people are working from home, but it's great that we have the capability to we, do that. Absolutely. Um, thank, thank, thank. Thank our thank to the tech team, uh, IT right? people setting that up in, in a day and a half and and getting that working for you know just about all of our yeah, staff. Yeah, I, I can remember you know uh, just you know this past February in 2020, you know the, the the news started creeping in about hey you know this may come to the United States and uh, you know by early March it still thought you still thought nah this is this is yeah. never going to get to the point where we think it could get. And again, thanks to, uh, you know, the fine folks here at Weatherworks, uh, the IT side, you know, we got Joe and Ken and, uh, yeah, um, they were just laying, others. laying the groundwork even and, beforehand, even, uh, actually half a year or so before mm -hmm. this actually hit, right. we had that groundwork had already yeah, laid down. So when that did, we just had to go in high gear a little bit, but I, I gotta say it was pretty Within seamless. Within two weeks, we're all at home. It was incredible. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, I was, uh. I know we, we, we pushed hard, but um, we, we got everyone working and we, from and home. And we still forecasted and, and we're able to, you know, con continue to supply our, 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 our service without, without any kind of, uh, you know, break or any yeah. kind of... Uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty seamless. And, Very. And, and, and we've surveyed clients and it's been um, um, very, very effective. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we'll... We'll get back to normalcy, hopefully, right? Yeah, normalcy will come soon, I would think. Um, but um, eventually. Um, you know, so I'm thinking, you know, you started with radio. You went to some snow and ice clients. Um, and then once we got to the Mountain Court office, at least when I was hired in 2008, um, it seemed like, you know, we were mostly in the snow and ice industry at that point. There was still radio, for sure. Um but I, I mean, take us through that a little bit more. I mean, it started going away from radio. You went more into snow and ice, maybe a little bit, and even forensic side of things. Right. I think um, the um, the forensic work. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> the forensic um, part of the business took off um, 
uh, around 96, 97. Mm -hmm. And also, it, 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 it was partially due to bringing on another individual and me having time to focus on right. forensic work. Um, that quickly turned into me and Tommy having more time to work on forensic work. Mm -hmm. um, um, but radio, this was mostly AM radio, mm -hmm. was a dying animal. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We, we, we doing okay here? <laughs> we, are, we are doing fine. Uh, radio was a dying animal, and um, I saw that. Um, so our efforts really turned to um, moving into the direction of um, these critical decision makers. Who are they? Let's identify them. Right. They're uh, directors of facilities. They're heads of hospitals. They're um, uh, big venue, outdoor venues, mm -hmm. um, uh, stadiums. Um, yeah. Professional pro sports professional teams. Professional sports teams, snow plowing contractors, police departments, school districts, and the list went on and on. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kevin began marketing more intensively mm -hmm. this group of individuals. And, and that's, um, that turned into a lot of successes for us. Um, we followed the same mission. We followed the same um, um, path in soliciting these uh, individuals. Um, we talked about uh, personal communication, personal relationships, et cetera, and um, that helped us uh, build that clientele. And you're right. Um, by the time we hired Mike Mahalik, we had transferred to 70% of our business being in the snow and ice industry, 30% in radio. And that radio has continued to diminish. We still have stations, though, so I don't want to diminish that point. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, and now we're into podcasting, which is kind of like radio. Yes. There we <laughs> so go. It's full, full circle. circle. There you full go. Circle, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now, Frank, one other thing that I'll tell you. When I came back to the Northeast, I lived down in South Carolina for several years. I'll tell you, when I came to Weatherworks, I'm not going to lie, I had no idea forensic meteorology even existed. And I, not only that, I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that there was such a demand for it. And it's incredible what it actually entails. I mean, well, it, it, it's, it's, I think it's incredible that it's gone from, um, the infancy of what I used to do back in the 80s and early 90s to having a department with a director or a coordinator, or an assistant coordinator, two forensic right. meteorologists in addition to myself. So it has grown. Uh, and, um, and we do a fantastic job because I see the work that other individuals do. And I don't think there's a firm in the country that provides the, the, the level of intensity in these reports that we do. I mean, we really break it down. Yeah, our forensic team is always and, busy. I yeah, mean, it's, yeah. it's incredible. So, it, it, and, and uh, you know, constantly getting great feedback uh, from the legal profession, um, from the insurance industry, which we do a lot of work for. Um, uh, and it, it's, been, it's been very, very positive. It's continued to grow steadily. Uh, that revenue stream has grown for for over 20 years now. And I don't even know if many people know what forensic meteorologists even do. Like, so can you explain that a little bit for well, everybody I mean, listening? The, uh, forensic science in general is re the, the science of reconstruction. So a forensic meteorologist basically reconstructs the meteorology. Uh, and forensic means that it has something to do with litigation like a or forensic court. detective and you would see on some of the, you right. know, the, the CSI, CSI shows exactly. and like that. Um, so basically, you're, you're reconstructing an event that has s something to do with litigation. Um, and it could be a criminal event. Um, there was a case I worked on years ago um, involving a murder on Route 80, and it, it involved foot, footprints and, you know, did it rain after the footprint? When were those footprints there, wow. et cetera? So developing um, a history of the weather mm -hmm. so that the um, forensic uh, detectives that were there um, uh, could determine whether or not uh, those tracks actually fit this individual. Yeah, that's just um, crazy. <clears throat> that's amazing. That, I wouldn't even have thought of that 
you know, coming in, even when I was getting into weather and I was going through college and, you know, I never thought that there could be something like that yeah. um, I, in the that, weather field. That, that, that part excites me. I think that if I hadn't become a meteorologist, uh, attorney was on my list too, because I would like to challenge and argue with people all the time. So, um, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's a fascinating field. Um, uh, slip and falls, it, it ties into our snow plowing contractors because they deal with uh, insurance policies to protect them from slip and falls. We talk to them about uh, slip and falls and collecting the right data. So we, we've tied it all together with, with the industry that we work in. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, I don't know, guys, do we want to take a little break here before we get to the second portion of the program? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we have a few other things to chat with uh, sure. Frank about. Uh, yeah, we we got to get to the social media aspect, of course, of weather. I mean, there's a there's a few other things we want to tie up here. All right. Well, that sounds good. So uh, again, we're here with uh, CEO and President of Weatherworks, Frank Lombardo, and we're just going to take a short little break, and we'll be back right after this. You're listening to The Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. I am meteorologist Brad Miller, my co-host Mike Mahalik, uh, also here. And uh, we continue with a very special edition here of our podcast, uh, CEO and President of Weatherworks. Frank Lombardo. And uh, Frank, just to continue our conversation now, we've, uh, of course, talked about the forecasting uh, product of WeatherWorks and, of course, the uh, forensic side. Uh, we'd be remiss not to talk about certified snowfall totals, another uh, you know big uh, product that we produce here at uh, WeatherWorks. And uh, I'll tell you, we have uh, locations all across the country. Uh, we're, we're up to like 10,000 now? 17,000. Wow! Okay, well, <laughs> 17 CSU Brad's like, I got to get but, to work. But don't share that with our staff, okay? <laughs> 17, I can tell them it's just a few hundred. No, 17,000 locations. Probably, uh, I, I would say uh, this is one of the uh, products I'm most proud of. The, 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 this offering um, came as a result of a client um, back in the 90s uh, wanting to verify snowfall totals mm -hmm. to a, a, a large insurance company. And this was a growing client who we still have. And um, we started producing the product. In fact, um, Tommy was the first one to produce the product and um, uh, automated a nice uh, uh, look of the product. But manually, basically, it involved um, uh, detailing or providing the details of every snowstorm that affects a particular zip code mm. or property, and um, and providing a total um, uh, as a third party uh, service, uh, so that both property owner and snowplowing contractor can come together and agree on one source. Um, the the real difference is that although the weather service measures snowfall, the weather service measures snowfall in 24 hour increments. And we were the first one in the industry to um, build a product based on the event. So if the event starts at 10 p.m. and ends at 6 a.m. and there's six inches of snow, it's a six inch snowfall. Mm -hmm. The weather service might call that a two inch snowfall and a four inch snowfall. Mm. Uh, so historically, we provide this to clients, not just for verification, but also we now have a 20-year history that clients can build better uh, billing models, can assess their risk better, uh, determine um, you know how many two-inch storms have we had, how many four-inch storms have we had, and they're really legit four-inch storms sure. uh, because we're we, we've analyzed event data over the years, um, and it is our fastest-growing bit business. Yeah, right? I mean, our events, as you say, you know, they can range from as little as a, as a dusting of snow or a coating of snow uh, over a parking lot overnight to, you know, a couple of feet of snow from a blizzard, including ice storms and right, ice accretion. Right. So you know, we, it's again, all in tied in. It's, it's uh, basically 
For us, it's zero tolerance. If there's anything that fell and accumulated, we record it. We will we, record we, it. We, we mark it for the client, and then the client decides whether or not that was a billable event or not. Right. I mean, I think that's a great product for those property managers and the snowplow contractor alike. I mean, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine having that in you know my landscaping business uh, when I was doing it. I mean, that would be make things so much easier rather than just getting it from the radio or getting it from the news source or whatever. Maybe oh, we had five point five inches, but certified by a meteorologist. Certified by a meteorologist, um, manually analyzed. Um, um, we're really the only company that does that um, for for the the database that we have basically um yeah it's it's you know and, and all the meteorologists here at weatherworks we, we do the cst's and i'll tell you uh, the amount of time and effort that go in to each certified snowfall total event you know it's it's incredible and 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 i'll tell you every meteorologist here takes pride in that you know if, if they find something wrong or, or there's a problem down the road you know each individual meteorologist that did that or whoever was responsible for that certain report, I, and I, I know in my case, oh man, I, there's no way, I, I, I get upset. I get upset right, when, sure. I, when there's something that comes back. And, and, it's okay, I get upset too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's almost like, you know, you, you, yeah. you, you hope that you, you do the best you can on all sure. of those. And if somebody you know, has an issue with it, then you do take it personally. Yeah, you, you take know. pride in all that. Sure and you do, all that analysis you, you go and, through. And, and, and well, you do. I mean, the individuals that, that create these and, uh, you know, the audience has to understand that, you know, they do take ownership in this product because it's manually done. Sure. Um, uh, we automate some speed into it. We collect data rapidly, but it's still automated. It's, it's still manually. It's human touch that is still right. involved. It's that human touch that, report. that QCs every report mm -hmm. that, that no one else is doing uh, in the country. So that just, that just makes me think, what was the highest total you've ever given in a CST? Me? Yeah. You know? I can remember almost three feet somewhere in the Sierra Nevada. Yeah? Yeah. It, I, I know it's not the highest here at Weatherworks, but I, I don't know what the highest I've is. I've ever given. I know I've given a 36-inch report in Connecticut uh, for the blizzard in 2013. Oh, yeah. I think uh, a lot of the media called it Nemo. At the time, but um, that I think was the highest amount that I've given in a single storm. And now I'm sure some of the people who have our lake effect areas oh, yeah. have given them way more well, than there that. Was that. There was that one storm just two years ago. Erie, Erie had that's I can't well, remember exactly. 50, six, they had they initially their claim was sixty some inches. Um, we actually reported less snowfall there based on our analysis than the National Weather Service. They recorded a record snowfall of 60 some inches. We reported 50 some inches. And as it turned out, three months after the yes. winter had passed, the National Weather Service sent a correction, correction and said that that number was wrong. They lowered it closer to our number. Ah, All right. So we, I like to hear that. So, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We, but so we've had some very, very uh, high numbers on those, on those uh, snowfall totals. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing, like you know, what goes into that. And, and even with the start times and the, and the temperatures and the changeovers, all that's included in certified snowfall totals, uh, which is just fantastic. Um, well, that, 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 you know, that ties us right into our, uh, our next topic here, Mike. And, uh, you know, we'll probably finish on this here in the next uh, few minutes. But, you know, when we do the certified snowfall totals, we use a lot of different sources and pictures and Social media comes to mind, of course, and you know it's it's something that we deal with every day as a meteorologist now, and every snowstorm, especially uh, tropics to a point as well. But the worst part about <laughs> trying to forecast the correct weather is seeing what we see on Twitter and yep. seeing what we call now. I don't want to upset people, but we call them armchair meteorologists, and they do exist. And they're the kind of folks that put out these 10-day model forecasts. Yep. And 
they are thinking this is going to happen verbatim, verbatim, 10 days later, there's going to be four feet of snow in New York City. Look at the model run. <laughs> and then 12 hours later, the next run comes out it's and gone. it's rain or it's off the coast. <laughs> yeah. so, Look I at mean, that 384 hour forecast. Well, no. the GFS goes out even further. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, understood. You know, this is, and, and as much as we rely on social media, Mike, and we yeah. think that it's a great, it's a great, uh, you know, avenue for what we do now with yeah, the podcast absolutely. as well. But, you know, Frank, we fight this obviously now every day with what we see on Twitter and Facebook and potential forecast versus what we forecast correctly. So, right. I mean, the, the, the issue has always existed, but because of social media and technology, and faster speeds of technology, it has magnified. It's it's it, tremendous. As, I mean, as great I, as I, it I, is, it, it hurts it, sometimes though. Also. Exactly, and I, you know, I would deal with it years ago because TV media always mm -hmm. had a level of hype, yeah. but the social media aspect has really magnified this. But it, for me, it's like a love hate relationship. Uh, and like you said, there, you know, there, there's some good. Yeah, yeah, they're armchair meteorologists. Um, they're, they're a dime a dozen. They're all over the place these days. And again, not to put them down uh, because they're, they're weather enthusiasts. They're hobbyists, uh, right. And on it, the other hand, great. they sometimes bring up good points that we miss. So we need to monitor them. We watch them. Uh, they also, they, they trigger interest in our clients. That's they true. also trigger confusion. <laughs> That's the but worst where do you That's... get where do you clear things up? You call WeatherWorks, and, and right, and That's you clear it. things and up. This is where I, it actually uh, could it, so, it help. So, so I, I have mixed feelings about them. I encourage clients to stay away from them. Real quick, um, um, I talked to a group of snowplowing contractors uh, six months ago this past winter, and um, uh, I asked how many people had apps on their phone and. They all raise their hand, of course, and yeah. then I went on and on. I says, how many have two apps? How many have three apps? How many have four apps? Still some hands up. How many have five apps? Still a couple. One guy had six weather apps oh my gosh. on his phone. I says, how can you make a decision? <laughs> yeah. That, that doesn't... So, so, you know, getting some clarity is our mission. And that's what I like to tell the client. You want three apps on your phone. You want to see the radar. You want to see this. You want to see a 10-day forecast, but call us, talk to us, and we'll tell you, is there, is there any truth to this? And, and that's hopefully what our... Yeah, and there, and there might be a little <laughs> bit of truth. There might be one model out there saying uh, that there could be a two-foot snowstorm. Yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, honestly, guys, during the winter... Those are a dime a dozen, like you said, too. Exactly. Every, I mean, every, it seems every, like every yeah, every ten day forecast has a snowstorm. I mean, every week I could probably pull out a blizzard for you in the winter. It just one model of, <clears throat> of a certain run, yeah, it's, always. And that's where you know you get the hype going on social media <clears throat> about those big storms, but then you know it's going to be gone the next run. And right. the 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 thing you have to look for is. Is there consistency? Absolutely. Does that storm show up time after time? Is it showing up on different models that are structured differently? You know, then you start getting some confidence on a big storm happening. You know, so that's why, you know, here at WeatherWorks, we don't like to hype that much right. um, in that effect because we know that nine times out of 10, that blizzard, it won't happen. We like to be realistic about it. You know, and that's why we do, like Frank said, encourage people to give us a call so we can right. talk it over with them a little and bit about bring, the bring, bring it back to reality. It's really a reality check. You call us up and we'll 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 let you know whether there's any truth, some truth, or a lot of truth. To, yeah. To, to to what you're hearing. Um, uh, years ago, I I took some of this media hype and um, went through a winter, and in a, in a in a Northeast winter, this media hype would generate about 10 times the average snowfall that occurs. In it. So, you wrote an article about that too. Yeah, well, 360 inches of snow would fall in parts of New Jersey <laughs> if you looked at every 10 day forecast and wow. said, uh, oh, oh yeah, here's a snowstorm, 24 inches, here's a snowstorm, 24. And so, so bring that into reality, maybe 10% of the time, 
there's some truth, okay? Right. So, but we identify patterns, we identify, sure. you know, realistic uh, expectations. Yeah, and that's what you have to do. You have to match the models up with the current global pattern. Does this storm even make sense, you know, based on, you know, what the Arctic is doing, based on what the Pacific is doing, you know? It, that's where you have to kind of get some insight. And that's why it's still important that we have um, human meteorologists, you know, getting involved in the forecast yeah, I mean, and it's not just a computer app, output computer generated and they change every couple of hours so i mean that, that's the thing that you just can't always you know rely on that's sure. for sure absolutely so anything more on social media frank i think uh um i i, I, <laughs> I probably said more than i wanted to I, no uh, i, I think it's hopefully fine. i didn't insult anybody out there no um, i i think i, we're I okay. I like what we're doing. I, I, I like our post. Um, I like that we've taken advantage. I shouldn't say taken advantage, but taken the opportunity uh, to uh, utilize social media. It's important for our clients. It's certainly not 1986 anymore. Um, and we need to um, you know, keep demonstrating to our clients and providing them with uh, the technological level that they, they, they expect and yeah, that they want. Absolutely. Uh, we and we want to be on that cutting edge, um, but uh, but we do try to rein it down. <laughs> right? No, absolutely. You know, we want to be real, uh, and we've done and we've done a good job at that. Um, so we talked about where we came from. We talked about you know even social media a little bit, and you know expanding and all that sort of stuff. Um, what about the path forward here? Uh, Frank, what what do we what do we think, or what do you think um, <laughs> will be in the future for WeatherWorks? Uh, well, I think um, my granddaughter is only three, so uh, she'll probably be running the company in about eighteen years. Um, <clears throat> uh, she's she's got her cloud types down. She knows Cumulus and Cirrus right now. She's working on Stratus. <laughs> she still calls Stratus Cirrus, uh, but that's for a three year old. That's acceptable. Um, but no, I, it, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it, it certainly is a challenge because um, our, our strategy moving forward is to continue with the mission that we've had, that there's a lot of human contact, there's a lot of building relationships uh, with individuals, with companies. But on the other hand, we do have to add automation. Um, we have... Um, uh, two individuals working on some uh, AI uh, products right now, um, where they're analyzing tens of thousands of data sets and data points in order to help us better uh, produce products for the snow and ice industry. Uh, one of them uh, that will uh, launch this winter uh, is a product focused on um, refreeze. Uh, both identifying when refreeze will occur and if it has occurred using hundreds of thousands of prior data points. So looking at what's happened and did refreeze actually occur. Uh, unlike other products that are out there that are just, uh, oh, it hit 32, <clears throat> we're looking at road pavement temperatures, we're looking at the amount of sun, we're looking at a lot of variables uh, to do this and um, uh, happy with uh, the path it's taken. So there'll be a lot more of that uh, in the next five years. Um, uh, our data uh, that we've collected for the past 20 years um, will continue to grow uh, and has helped people analyze risk, uh, insurance companies, um, uh, all the large snow plowing contractors are beginning to look at our data as well as um, large property owners to help them uh, determine, you know, what's, what, what a typical budget, snow budget might be. Sure. So, um, um, and, and, um, and hopefully we'll continue modernizing and improving our um, uh, delivery of our products um, without, without compromising the human factor. Right. And that's always the challenge. Yeah, we can make him more colorful. We yeah. can make him more, you know, sparkle and... Yeah. Uh, but but we still have to keep that human factor in there, and that's that's really right. that's really our challenge. 
And I think that's that's really a good thing about Weatherworks. You know, we're really trying to get that quality to people. It's not just, oh yeah, we'll give you this automated forecast and no, no, no. We we want to put quality there. We want to be better than what's out there, you know? And um, I think that's that's what we're really going to work on. It's the personal factor, and like we talked about earlier. You know, I, I, I can't tell you how many calls I've gotten from clients and they'll, they'll say, hey, hey Brad, talk to me about what's gonna happen here. I got one forecast from the weather guy on TV telling me this, and I got another forecast here from my app telling me this. You know, talk to me, tell me what's gonna happen. When they tell me that, it just, that just en ensues so much trust towards me. Like, hey, he really wants to know, you know exactly what I think versus everyone else. Right. And, and that's what, and really, and it, that just it really says a lot, I think, from not only the client, but that, that, that they trust us to that point when they're, their personalization there, when they say, hey, Brad, talk to me. And yeah. I mean, that's great. And I can't tell you how many clients actually are able to do that. And I, I just, you know, I just take that, yeah. you know, so personal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think that about does it here, guys. I mean, Frank. Thanks a lot for being on our podcast. Uh, it was the Fun. first guest for us, so hopefully uh, everything went well. I think it went fantastic. Um, yeah. If I, <laughs> if I think of anything, I'll, I'll see if I can come back for it. may have to do a part two. You part two. We could do a part two. That's not a problem. We could, we could talk about uh, <laughs> well, let's wait storms. Wait after the pandemic. Let's hopefully okay. everything yeah. clears up. I mean, we could, thing. yeah, I mean, there's... We could always have Frank back talking about other things, Talk whether it be golf and things like that, snowstorms you know, or enjoy. <laughs> his, historic uh, events and, and, and things of that nature. But uh, in the meantime, like I said, Frank, thanks for being with us. Right. And, uh, you know, again, guys, we have a new podcast every two weeks. So please come and join us. It's on Podbean. It's on Stitcher. It's on Spotify, on your Apple phones, on your Android products. And uh, even iHeartRadio now. So um, we're on a lot of platforms out there. So please visit the Weather Lounge. And also, don't be afraid to stop by our social media channels. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and all those other ones. So personally, just drop us a line. Let us know if there's something you want to hear about, some topic you want to hear about. But in the meantime, remember, we are WeatherWorks, your weather experts. And uh, stop by anytime at weatherworksinc.com. And in the meantime, have a good one, everybody.